You know, making video game reviews is like the proverbial staring into the void. Except that instead of just staring back into you, the void also posts spam in your comments section, DMCA claims you, and then demonetizes you. Everyone's talking about Torchlight 3, the latest ARPG from Ektra and published by Perfect World Entertainment, but what they're all saying is not necessarily good. Putting aside Perfect World's penchant for knockoffs and quick cash grabs, this release has raised more than a few eyebrows with its own standout issues and design problems. Well, what are they, and are they significant enough to influence how you spend your precious playtime? Let's find out. I probably don't have to explain to you what this style of game is. Most people watching this have probably spent countless hours playing Diablo, Path of Exile, or even an earlier iteration of Torchlight. But for those unfamiliar, it can be summarized thusly. You create a character whose job is to plow through cartoon clouds full of monsters, holding your primary controller button down until you feel the need to tap a second one. This all sounds kind of boring, but to be honest, most people watch videos or listen to Spotify the whole time. And by the time you reach Season 3 of The Andy Griffith Show, you'll enter the end game. This is where you'll continue to hold down the same button, but move more slowly through the same monster clouds until you have enough good equipment to min-max your character. Now that you know all there is to know about ARPGs, on to the review. Torchlight 3 plays out over three acts, and the story, as it is, is very forgettable. While the Diablo series has managed to foster a deep sense of lore containing a well-defined cast of heroic and villainous characters with real motivations and backstories, this title presents an ensemble of stock one-dimensional placeholders. You to reap the rewards! Watch your work! You are a lazy, insolent child! Time. In each act, per the specification, you have a hub location where you'll receive quests, buy and sell items, and gamble for new items, etc. To be fair, most people don't play ARPGs for their storylines. Instead, if one were to summarize Torchlight 3 in a single word, said three times, it would be grind, grind, grind. The game is simply lousy with loot and opportunities to get more of it. It will be dropped continuously at all levels and in abundant supply. There is, of course, a variety of randomly generated weapons and pieces of equipment with the requisite affixes and stacks of buffs. There are equipment sets to collect, stats to compare, and builds to contemplate. See you next time! Bottom line, there is nothing in the game's premise that moves the bar at all on the player experience. Torchlight is an action, role-playing game. Just as it says on the tin, nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> You start out by picking one of four archetypes. Sharpshooter, Dusk Mage, Forged, or Railmaster. These represent the Ranger, Mage, Tank, and Fighter archetypes, respectively. Each class comes with two preset skill trees and one that you may choose. This is kind of a nice touch, and it does allow for some pretty fun and customizable builds. As your character levels, you'll get skill points to spend on increasing the skills of those trees. One interesting deviation from the standard is that tier unlocks are global across all trees. And if you ever need to reset your skills, pick up some respectacles and, well, respect your trees. The first class I tried was the Railmaster, a railhammer wielding, track laying fighter. One of his stock skill trees lets him create a train that follows him around like a pet, providing both offensive and defensive support. It's kind of hokey and takes up way too much screen space, but you kind of get used to it. The second required skill tree is weapon-oriented, unlocking slams, spins, and other massive weapon attacks. And for my freestyle skill tree, I picked one focused on bleeds and health drains, turning me into this kind of giant hulking vampiric John Henry, swinging and smashing his way through level after level of mindless amusement. During character creation, you'll also pick out a pet. In this game, pets are constant companions with their own skills and equipment and can be found with multiple skin variants. They're handy for their ability and inventory capacity, but can be considered a piece of equipment, no more no less. Further pets are unlocked regularly after boss fights, and you can pick up a few more in town if you're so interested. There's another method of progression called Contracts. 
This is a set of battle passes that can unlock resources, pets, and equipment, and may be freely switched between. Rare XP called Fame, farmed from high-level mobs and bosses, helps unlock new tiers. Then there's base building. Early on in the game, you're given a fort to upgrade. By collecting resources and plans from all over the world, you can forge new upgrades. And those upgrades can be purely cosmetic, or provide facilities, and even trees and shrines that give account-wide buffs. Then there's the requisite account-wide chest for twinking your alts. Again, there's really nothing that stands out as innovative here. So how are the graphics and control? I mean, again, they're average. They utilize the cartoonish low-poly style of Torchlight's earlier releases. What's kind of interesting is that this technique is supposed to provide better performance as well as making individual units easier to distinguish. But Torchlight 3 manages to fall short on both of these. The animations appear clunky even on Xbox One X. The models quickly meld into an indistinguishable, writhing mass of confused models. I'm not sure if it's the higher frame rate or other better choices, but this has never been an issue in Path of Exile or Diablo. Couple this slow animation with very unresponsive controls, and you've got a recipe for very frustrating gameplay. The game has many odd navigation bugs, such as being unable to close out dialogue sometimes without closing out the entire menu. There are a lot of weird quality of life missteps. For example, like when you enter a new dungeon, sometimes you'll be facing backwards and back toward the exit, sometimes you'll be facing away from it. It's just really off-putting and shows a lack of polish. But together these kind of paint a picture of a product that was created without much passion or imagination. I really hate to be a downer, but it's just not that great of a game. Torchlight 3 is, to me, a game written to spec. It's like somebody looked at a word cloud of game reviews, saw loot, pet, battle pass, and base building, and turned it into a requirements document. Furthermore, it seems that an ambitious intern had found the words generic, uninspired, and tedious, and decided to make a name for himself. I really wanted to enjoy Torchlight 3. I really did. I like Path of Exile, and I really enjoyed Diablo 3, and I played it for tens of hours, probably a good hundred hours. But sadly, it falls into the same category of anemic reskins as Genshin Impact. It's like you're expecting this delicious steak dinner, and then finding out it's actually Salisbury steak TV dinner that's still partially frozen, whose carton is covered with misspellings and a picture of a frowning cat. So, Torchlight 3 was developed by Ectra Incorporated and published by Perfect World Entertainment. It's out today for PC and consoles for just $40, and at that price, I can't enthusiastically recommend it. If you're into the series or simply must play every ARPG or you have friends who do, then that's fine, but as a fulfilling single-player experience for most people, I'd really, really hold off for a deep, deep discount. So that's our review of Torchlight 3. If you played it, what was your experience? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Also, feel free to add any questions or suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. It would be greatly appreciated and really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching.